I don't want to be bound by archaeology. I want to know where the boundaries are. If we go too far outside of archaeology, I've lost interest. Uh, this is the collaborative project undertaken by an artist and an archaeologist centered on a buried skate park. I'm Bruce Emmett, the artist. And I'm Bob Muckle, the archaeologist. When we speak of negotiation, we're speaking of it in two ways. First, there's the ongoing attempt to negotiate with a landowner who has until now denied us access and permission to excavate. At least equally important, though, is the negotiation between the two of us on the nature of art and archaeology. This is a very interesting patch of lawn. It is, this is the way the site looked when I became interested in it eight years ago. This is the way the site looked when Bob became interested in it three years ago, three years later. And this is the way it still looks today. While the site hasn't changed at all, it has changed us, the way we think about art, archaeology, and collaboration. The art is beneath the grass. The art is in our play and how we design an archaeology project. The art is how we approach our collaboration. The art is how we excavate and present our results if we ever get that opportunity. Buried beneath the lawn is a significant feature, what is possibly the world's oldest intact skateboard park. The first concrete skateboard park constructed in Canada in 1977 and subsequently buried in 1984. It rests on the edge of a school grounds of a very wealthy, white and conservative city. The landowner is a school district. In its heyday, this was ground zero for Canadian skateboarding on the West Coast. The advent of California Cool, the park, is a rolling surf-style double snake run built for carving and turning, designed with parabolic curves inspired by natural wave formations. The designer is an art school graduate and views his creations as sculpture. But by the early 1980s, the park had become a teenage wasteland a place for weekend parties, burning tires rolling down its walls, and smashed beer bottles littering the bowl. Consequently, it was buried in 1984. We aren't certain, but we think it is intact, uh, with a simple covering of soil preserving its integrity. I'm a skateboarder and an artist. Eight years ago, I combined these interests while working on a graduate degree in visual arts. I focused on this site and the history and mystery of the buried skate park hardly more than an urban legend, even among skateboarders, and almost entirely unknown by the general public. I produced art about the skate park and its layered contexts and histories. I reinterpreted, recomposed, repurposed, reclaimed, restructured, and reimagined the site. From an early stage, I approached all this interpretive artistic action with what I saw as a sort of archeological spirit. Towards the end of my master's, I arranged for a ground penetrating radar to be completed on site. Present at the scan were, geo were the geophysics engineers, a pair of documentary filmmakers, as well as the person responsible for the park's construction back in 1977. This was something of Bruce's work that really piqued my interest. I may not understand art, but I do understand ground penetrating radar. I view this as an extension of my appropriative art practice where I incorporate other individuals' methods and practices into my art. There's also a sort of performative uh, aspect, maybe a little like theater uh, with me as director. Due to the limitations of the scanning equipment when scanning damp clay-based soils, the data was inconclusive, the resulting image rather a nondescript shape. Or a very juvenile joke. <laughs> From an archaeology perspective, the scan itself was ultimately a failure, but from an art perspective, this was an opportunity. In 2012, I had a solo exhibit at the West Vancouver Museum, where I filled their two small galleries with art. Uh, the show included these works, 100-year-old cedar shingles from the home of West Vancouver's first mayor, inscribed with the flawed radar data using a CNC router. By marrying the incomplete data to these artifacts, I was able to create, create a complete artwork. Found materials, appropriated technologies, and an image produced uh, using methods outside of my control. I'm very interested in this sort of distancing of the hand of the artist. So a little aside, at the exhibit opening, there was a, a famous Canadian artist in attendance, and at one point in the evening, uh, she asks to speak with me, and uh, so this icon of Canadian modernism uh, takes me by the elbow and, and pulls me close and says, I'm not generally interested in this sort of thing, and dismissed my entire show, less one work. She leads me over to the shingles and says, 
But tell me about these. They're fascinating. I think failure and success are both highly subjective. <laughs> Following my research and successful solo exhibit, uh, I was keen on excavating the site, but I was stymied. Uh, the official word from the landowner, and that's the local school board, was... Bob. While we are interested in your project from the radar imaging and historical perspective, we do not have an appetite for excavation or restoration as the same reasons for its original burial still persist. So as a skateboarder and an artist, I, I don't like being told what to do uh, or where I can go. Uh, but I knew that I couldn't just call up my skater buddies and dig up the park in the middle of the night. Uh, if I wanted to gain access, I would need a partner, uh, someone with real credentials, not just a fancy fine arts degree. I didn't need a shovel. What I needed was an archaeologist. Enter Bob. <laughs> it's still me, isn't it? I heard Bob on CBC one day talking about his interest in recent things, 20th century stuff. Uh, so I sent him an email well after midnight. Now, remember, this was a cold call. It was well after uh, 3 a.m. And you might understand my surprise when a response came just minutes later. I've been directing a wide range of field projects for over the last 30 years and wasn't looking for anything new, but things changed about 3 a.m. one morning in 2013. It was then that I received an email from someone I did not know, but would eventually become my collaborator on this project. The email invited me to become involved in this archaeological adventure into the world of skateboarding, art, and archaeology. I happened to be at my computer when that email came in. I was immediately hooked by the prospect of collaborating with skateboarders and artists. When we met, we got on easily, immediately, along with many other things, but mostly and especially beer. Uh, Bob and I discovered we both have an appreciation for the work of Mark Dion. As far as situating this practice of art archaeology, he is our linchpin. I'm attracted to Dion's bold appropriation of archaeological methods and his straddling of that line, that gray area of art and not art. I'm appreciative of Dion's unique approach to archaeology. This was the first time I realized that archaeology could be a subject of contemporary art, a new lens with which to view the past. Working with a contemporary artist was very much an extension of that. But if we ever get to the art, uh, what might it look like, Bob? The collaborator site work is speculative at this stage. We have discussed possibilities. Ultimately, the goal is excavation. When that time comes, depending on what kind of support we have and what our budget looks like, what will our approach be? Do we make the park skatable once again, either temporarily or permanently? A useless object made useful? A public artwork for public use? Or will it be an artistic intervention? Slices of the park exposed, colorful, backlit, plexiglass light boxes with the object lying beneath. A contemplative or possibly interactive installation. But we can only speculate. At every turn, we have been rejected by the landowner. Over the years, we have contacted the school district multiple times, proposing engaging opportunities to the students and the public to participate in community art archaeology. Our proposals range from a simple one-day test excavation to, multi -year pro to a multi-year project involving teachers and students at a local high school being actively involved in research design, excavation, and presentation. We have received the same rejection time and again. I have had to adapt and get creative. This is a new game for me. One of our approaches is to seek heritage status of the site, beginning at the local and regional levels. And we did get carried away somewhat with drafting a proposal for the site receiving a nomination for inclusion on the list of World Heritage Sites. <laughs> Fortunately, we came to our senses about that one, but not for before formulating a proposal. I consider this to be a failure adverted. <laughs> a recent approach uh, we feel is a creative strategy. We are hoping to gain permission to excavate by going through the sewers. Not literally, but rather by making inquiries from the engineering department of the school district. In one of our earlier rejections uh, from the school district, I believe in an attempt to discourage us, uh, they indicated that the site had been partially destroyed by the construction of sewer lines uh, through the center of the park. Um, we have doubts and would like to know for sure. The engineering people have been initially responsive to our request for information. We remain hopeful that we can at least do a test excavation. Uh, under the guise of assessing the integrity of the sewer line's impact on the skate park. Uh, this isn't totally subversive, just a bit sneaky, we feel. Another idea we've been toying with is to ask to, is to, ask to excavate 
then we move a small section of the skate park for donation to an art museum where we can integrate the artistic and heritage significance of the park. And where, once again, we can explore that line between art and artifact. Uh, but faced with so much rejection, you may ask how we've sustained interest uh, when resistance is futile, is persistence worthwhile? The answer is that we continue to focus on the site to explore our archaeology. We will continue to engage with the site as a space of intellectual engagement, dialogue, and contemplation. Earlier this fall, we met after hours at an art museum for some art archaeology interaction. We gained access to their collection of artifacts, and I brought along some of my own. Our goal was to address the nature of art archaeology and attempt to find a shared vocabulary in terms of our understanding of art and artifact. Because as an artist, I don't look at objects the same way as an archaeologist. As we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the presentation, the original designer viewed his skate park as sculpture. Now, it's, it's complicated because although I refer to the buried skate park as, uh, bare, as uh, found or ready-made sculpture, I don't actually view his original creation as a sculpture. That is, I don't think of skateboard parks as sculpture. Yes, I see them as uh, sculptural, as well as architectural, but to me, they're not art. Uh, however, the skate park excavated the appropriative gesture, the performative act, the appropriation of an archaeologist's methods, the collaboration with an archaeologist, and the assignation of the object as archaeological artifact, to me, that is art. It's a bit of a complicated understanding. It's a bit contradictory, too, but there it is. In my view, it's not complicated or contradictory. It's a buried skate park that we simply want to excavate. <laughs> Back to the museum. I think Bob was skeptical as we didn't go in with a game plan, just a willingness to explore, to engage, to be open to ideas. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I started by placing a 50s, 1950s era Christmas tree stand inverted on a clear acrylic plinth, I proposed this found object to Bob as a ready-made artwork. I said no. <laughs> Bob was suspicious of my declaration of art. He felt it wasn't enough to invert the object. I asked him uh, what he would think if the object was larger, maybe on the scale of a monument. I said yes. <laughs> larger is artier, I believe you said. You also added uh, that it might be closer to art if there were more objects, an arrangement, a composition of things. As we progressed, we worked logically, systematically, and intuitively through a way of thinking about what determines an art object uh, versus an historical artifact. This was a key negotiation and an important series of steps that we needed to walk together. Then I gathered up some of my own collection of artifacts and assembled my own ready-made composition. I said no. <laughs> I'm trying to convert Bob. There's no question. At our next little art uh, excursion at the Vancouver Art Gallery, we investigated fashion as art, uh, contemporary indigenous art, collisions of art and non-art objects, high modernism. I was interested in how fluid and flexible the gallery was, their interdisciplinary approach, but I was bothered by some of the work and wasn't able to articulate why, then and now. I like art most of the time, well, some of it anyways. We're still negotiating. And that brings us back to this interesting patch of lawn. The current state of our collaboration is less concerned with trying to convince the school district of the value of what we're doing. No matter what their position or interest, the site still exists, the uh, project and the object still exists, and the project remains an intellectual, creative endeavor. We can continue to engage with the site and investigate the nature of the object, whether it's above or below ground. I think that what is so interesting is that eight years into this project for me and five for Bob, uh, even with the object of our, of our desire lying in its possibly permanent static state, the project feels more vibrant and dynamic, and dynamic than ever. Our current conversations are essential to us continuing our collaboration where we are creating space for one another within our practices. There have been some struggles in, this pro in approaching this project. First, there is the ongoing rejection of the landowners and our inability to convince them of the significance of the site and the value of archaeological research. Second, it has been difficult for me to get out of the pure archaeology box, to think more creatively and expand or push the boundaries of what I consider to be archaeology. I consider this to be a bit of a failure, but I'm working on it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.